Welcome to Core Cutting Today for October 10th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. If you want to learn more about these stories, check out the show notes down below. I'll put a link to each story I talk about so you can read about them for yourself and come up with your own opinions. We'll love to hear from you. If you're new here, hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. We break down the world of core cutting every single day right here on our YouTube channel and over at corecarsnews.com. And by hitting subscribe and hitting that thumbs up, you help us out a lot because you let YouTube know you enjoy what we do here as we hopefully help you break free from the high cost of cable TV. Well, before we get into the news of the day, there are a lot of deals. So real quick rundown of a few of the big deals. If you find a deal, make sure to go to corecarsnews.com, click on the contact us and send us an email. Let us know about it. But the uh, Disney Plus is on sale again. If you agree to pay for three years up front, you can get Disney Plus for just $4.72. We're about a month out from its launch right now. This is a great way to get in on it. Now you can still pre-order for the regular $6.99 a month or $69.99 a year if you prefer to just do that. If you want to learn more, you need a promo code to get the three-year deal, which works out to $4.72. Link in the show notes down below. Also, Amazon's 50-inch 4K HDR TV from Insignia with a built-in Fire TV is on sale for $279. It's one of the best prices this has been at in a while. If you want a really good 4K HDR Fire TV edition smart TV, $279. Now, it's not the Dolby Vision version. It's the HDR10 version. Link in the show notes down below. All right, let's get into the news of the day. Dish and DirecTV may actually merge if a new plan comes um, into reality into their own independent company. That would be a subsidiary of AT&T. So Apollo uh, Global Management, which is the largest private, private equity firm um, in the United States, with over $200 billion of assets they're managing, has proposed to both Dish and AT&T that DirecTV Satellite and Dish Satellite merge into a new company. AT&T will retain ownership of that new company, but will be an independent subsidiary, which separates AT&T from a lot of the um, negative you know, repercussions of DirecTV right now with fallen subscriber accounts, etc. And this deal would give um, Dish a minority stake in it and Apollo a minority stake in the new company, uh, which would give Dish a bunch of money to go and build their new wireless network, would get AT&T some money still, and Apollo would get an investment into Dish and DirecTV. Now, this report was um, confirmed by Fox uh, Business, who reported that um, this proposal has been presented to both companies. According to their source, close to the talks, AT&T may not be willing to sell off um, DirecTV, but they are not opposed to the idea of maybe spinning it off into an independent company that's owned by AT&T. So this is kind of one of those legal um, term things here where you can actually take the assets, take the liability and everything, and move it to a new company, but have um, ownership of that new company retained by the original company. But if everything would go south and you want to declare bankruptcy, you could do that without AT&T necessarily having to do that in some different, different rules. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a business guy, but that's how it's been explained to me. But this would mean that DISH and a DirecTV would be merged. Many people have said that that seems to be very unlikely to get regulatory approval. According to this report, it is possible because um, Apollo Management says, hey, T-Mobile and Sprint were able to get approval by the Department of Justice. Because of that, we believe that we will also be able to get approval with this deal. Now, I am not necessarily as convinced of that as maybe they are, but I do actually see this being a reality or a possibility here um, of coming true. That with the growth of live TV streaming services and with the growth of uh, other um, on-demand services like Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, etc., that they could make an argument to say, hey, this isn't the early 2000s, it's definitely not the 90s. You know, there are a lot of competition, there's cable, there's AT&T's own TV, there's Sling TV, YouTube TV, etc. That will make this a reality. And just like Sirius XM had to merge to survive, maybe Dish and Direct TV have to merge to survive. We'll have to wait and see. For now, it's a proposal. It's got money and funding behind it. We'll see if it comes to reality. But let me know, would you want to see Dish and AT&T's Direct TV merge? Now, Dish would retain their own company running their wireless and all the other stuff. Maybe even Sling TV stay with Dish. 
AT&T would separate everything else out, but still run the combined company. It doesn't make sense for AT&T a little bit because they want DirecTV as a customer base to pull customers from over to AT&T TV, the new cheaper for them streaming service. It's more profitable to have an AT&T TV customer than a DirecTV customer. So we'll have to keep a close eye on this story and I'll let you know as we learn more about it. Dish could also use the money too. So Dish could use that money to expand its new wireless company that's building, its 5G efforts and more. So leave me a comment, let me know. Speaking of AT&T, there is a new uh, report that may hint that AT&T Sportsnet, which is the regional sports network, used to be called Root Sports. AT&T acquired it when they bought DirecTV and they renamed it to AT&T Sportsnets. Well, they recently uh, renewed their contract with the Pittsburgh Pirates and as part of this deal the Pittsburgh Pirates said in a statement said to some local media that they will use state-of-the-art technologies to ensure that our games are produced and distributed in a manner our fans demand uh, we're um, out there now this has led many to believe that they may be talking about AT&T Sportsnet at least the Pittsburgh one becoming available on live TV streaming services similar to how the Houston one is now streaming on um, uh, Fubo TV. Now, a similar thing like this happened with the Utah Jazz. Utah Jazz renewed with AT&T Sportsnet, and according to local papers in Utah, they told them that yes, we uh, the local AT&T channel will be coming to streaming services out there, like live, live TV ones like YouTube TV, Slink TV, etc. That never came to be reality. It's been almost two years now that didn't happen. So just because the press is reporting that this is being hinted at by the Pittsburgh um, team there, it may not, but the Houston Rockets and all them in Houston did force AT&T to put theirs on a least one streaming service. So I do think it's a possibility. I do think it's a reality that this could happen, um, but I don't think it's a guaranteed thing to happen. All right, so let me know, AT&T Sportsnet, what you think. All right, Comcast. If you're a Comcast Internet customer, um, you could be um, overcharged by thousands, or Comcast has overcharged thousands of people, and your bill could be one of them and you don't know it yet. So Ars Technica broke the story that Comcast has overcharged um, customers by saying they went over their data caps when they really didn't. Comcast has admitted that a software glitch basically had um, forced that their auto their tracking of your data usage was incorrect and overestimated how much data you were using. And they incorrectly billed customers for going over their data caps when they actually didn't. Comcast says they have refunded over about 2,000 people, but Ars Technica warns that they believe that many more people may be affected by this and have not um, been refunded. So if you are a Comcast internet customer and you were charged recently an overage for going over your data cap, you may want to contact um, Comcast and say, hey, I believe I was incorrectly billed for this. I don't believe I used that data and try to get your refund. So keep a close eye on this. You know, Comcast does not charge day caps in all their markets. In 27 of the 39 states they currently operate in, they do charge for data caps at this time. Now, with that, you get a terabyte free, 10 bucks for each additional 50 gigabytes over that, or 50 bucks for unlimited data. An internal document some time ago from Comcast was very clear. This is not about network management. This is about profit. Then they told their phone customer or phone techs to not tell customers that this is about data management or anything like that, network management to prevent congestion. It's really about profit. So Comcast can say, hey, if you're a heavy user, we're going to charge you more because it makes us more money. So it'd be interesting to see um, if uh, this is as widespread as Ars Technica believes it, where additional people out there have maybe been affected and don't even know it right now. So leave me a comment if you believe that you were one of the people out there that ended up being overcharged for Comcast there. And if you are unsure, check your recent bills. I know sometimes people get auto pays right and you may not notice a $10 change in your bill. Um, but if you are, make sure you check to see if you've been overcharged for data you didn't actually use. All right, good news if you like free movies. YouTube has expanded its lineup of free to watch movies. So in November of last year, uh, YouTube started offering free movies out there. They had about 100 hours at that time. Well, now they have almost 200 movies included in this, probably close to three, 400 hours worth of content 
out there. So the movies like The Terminator, Lord of War, Meatballs, and more are now all streaming for free legally with ads on YouTube. YouTube seems to be taking a page out of Voodoo's playbook by taking this uh, content, offering it for free with ads, and hoping you'll stay around and buy some movies or TV shows through their store. If you want to check out the movies, a link in the show notes down below to this story has the link to the um, to the, uh, all the movies. I was impressed. I thought there was a pretty good lineup of movies. Of course, with all free service, is you know there's going to be some great. Um, a titles there and there's gonna be some B and D titles there too but I spawned several things in there like hmm, I could definitely watch that and I don't know if I would rent it but for free with ads I'll definitely check it out if you use YouTube's new free with ads feature uh, for movies let me know what do you think of the quality of the ad placements is it better than you um, Pluto TV the Roku channel IMDB TV etc leave us a comment let me know speaking of free services Zumo TV has recently added 22 channels. Um, Zumo TV is a free on-demand and live TV streaming service that includes a huge collection of content out there, available on devices like, I believe, the Fire TV, Roku, and others. And now they've added 22 channels in the last month or so. So if you want to see everything Zumo TV's added, check the links down below. Let me know what your favorite one is. If you're looking to get in the Halloween spirit, and you want to do it for free, Pluto TV is announced they're going to be airing a different horror movie every night on Pluto TV Horror. At 10 p.m. Eastern, every night, you'll find a, um, a movie from classics like The Day of the Dead to more recent titles like Your Next will be airing on Pluto TV for free um, at 10 p.m. Eastern. So check that out if you're looking for some horror-related movies. And lastly, our review of the 2019 Fire TV Cube is up. I post it on YouTube. I also post a written review of it. It's on sale today. You can go pick it up at Best Buys and different stores around the country, probably Target too. Amazon is shipping theirs. They should be delivered if you pre-ordered it today or tomorrow. And I'll be honest, a quick review. It is definitely no be faster. Not sure it's fast enough to justify upgrading. It is fast enough to justify buying the new one if you need a new device over getting the slightly cheaper older version. If you want to see my written review of the 2019 Fire TV Cube, or you want to see my um, side-by-side -side comparison, because we put the 2019 version right next to the 2018 version and tested it out, check out the review down below. I have a video there where you can see it for yourself. You can say, hey, yeah, this looks noticeably faster. It doesn't look noticeably faster. It's really up to you. My one impression with it is the 2019-2018 version are physically exactly the same. The only um, difference is the processor being considerably faster on the 2019 model. Now we've learned over time that just because the processor is faster doesn't always mean it necessarily is when you plug it in faster, right? We've seen this before. 2018 version of the Fire TV Cube was faster than the Fire TV Stick 4K. But when you actually plug them in and you as the end user browse Netflix, launch live TV services and more, you would find that the 4K was actually slightly faster. And that goes into the fact that it has an echo built into it and all kinds of different um, issues there. So keep that in mind. And let me know which one you would pick. So link in the show notes down below. Hey, real quick reminder, the podcast that's typically 1 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays, this week only will be recorded Friday. It's a scheduling conflict on my end. My apologies. But check back tomorrow for more core cutting news, tips, tricks, and reviews. And for the 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow podcast here on YouTube. So check that out. All right, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. I hope the weather's amazing wherever you are. I hear some of you in the Midwest are having beautiful weather. Well, some people in the mountains are absolutely getting slammed with snow. So wherever you are, I hope you're being safe. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.